When it comes to integrating Microsoft CRM and Microsoft SharePoint, you really have four options to choose from. The first is a single document library for each entity in CRM. The second is a single hierarchical document library. The third one is manually pointing CRM records to the proper document library. And the last one is custom integration using the API. Let's take a look at how each of these look in production as a demo. First of all, regardless of which option you select, it looks about the same inside of CRM. You navigate to a record. You select the documents related list. And from here you see all the documents associated with this record. So the difference is in how these documents are viewed when you're viewing them from SharePoint. So let's take a look at how you configure the integration and what the different options look like in SharePoint. You configure the integration options in the settings area of Dynamic CRM under Document Management. From there, you open the Document Management settings. And your first step is to choose which entities you want to manage documents for. You just check off the ones you want to use. You also set up a default SharePoint site. So as a default, this is where the document libraries will be stored. Then you set up your configuration settings around how these will be stored in SharePoint. You can base them on an entity or not. Let's take a look at what this looks like if I do not configure the integration to be based on an entity. So if I go over into SharePoint, you can see the site contents has a separate document library for each and every entity that I've configured. And if I open those, you'll see a folder for each individual record containing the files for that particular CRM record. Your other option is to base this on an entity. Now let's take a look at what that looks like. If I base these on the account entity, then all the records in CRM will essentially be organized under the account entity. Each account will be given a folder in the account document library in SharePoint, and each record under the account will be given a subfolder. So you can see I have a list of accounts here that are from CRM. I actually store not just the account name, but also the GUID for the account name to make, make each of these folder names unique. And I can drill down into these to see the documents associated with this particular account, but I can drill even further to see the documents associated with the sub records underneath the account. But what if your SharePoint site isn't structured like that? What if you're a more complex organization or you don't want GUIDs in your file names, or if you want to automatically handle name changes of opportunities and accounts, what if your structure in SharePoint looks more like this? You have your basic SharePoint site. Under that site, you want to create subsites, one for each of your clients, and you might have dozens of these sites. And under each client site, you'd like to have a separate document library, one for sales and one for support. Within those libraries, you'd like to automatically create folders as new opportunities or new cases are created so you can track those in a structured, organized way that's easy to find whether you're looking for them in SharePoint or CRM. And what if you also want to have subsites under those clients for projects that you manage for them? And those project sites might have their own document library set up under them as well. What are the options for doing that? Well, you really have two options. The first option is to manually map CRM records to SharePoint sites, subsites, document libraries, and folders. So here you can see I'm looking at my standard view of SharePoint items from within CRM, and I can click Add Location, and I can go through the manual process of mapping this record to another location in SharePoint where documents should be exposed within CRM. I can give it a name. I can choose a site that it's within. If I've created a new site, I need to add it into CRM, and then I can select it here. And then I need to manually type in whatever the folder is going to be named. When I'm done with that, I can hit Save, and that new location is now available for me to create or view documents within. So that's one option. Our other option is using the API. 
So the API, for those of you who don't write code, is the ability to write code to make applications talk to each other. CRM has its own API, SharePoint has its own API. So you can write code such as this JavaScript that will exchange information between CRM to do things like keep names in sync, not use GUIDs, automatically create new sites, subsites, document libraries, and folders as new items are created within CRM. So those are the four options.